welcome to our next episode of Mocha Wave Talks. And I am really excited today because we are entering into the world of book talk. And I have with me here a book talker named Kirsten. And she has been very supportive of authors, and especially indie authors. Um, would you like to introduce yourself, Kirsten? I am Kirsten, and I read all genres. I'm married, and I have two dogs. <laughs> and a lot of times people think that, you know, you're reading so many books, you must have lots of time. But I always see you are a very busy person. <laughs> yes, I work a full-time job. I coach softball about 12 hours a week. Wow. And I run a book club. So I'm busy. <laughs> got a lot, lot, got a lot going on. But the one of the ways I met Kirsten was for through another author, Tirsa Darnell. And she said, Oh, she was so supportive. She helped me. And then I was looking and following Kirsten and she said something about um I'm looking for a book with spooky vibes. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> I wonder if this one would work. I and love so, my Halloween. <laughs> a little early Halloween. But, I mean, clearly. <laughs> there you go. I love, I love spooky things. I like Halloween vibes for sure. So what, how long have you been book talking? I guess that's a verb. <laughs> um, how long have you been doing that? Or can you tell us your journey? I actually just started in February. So it's kind of, it's still newer. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just now getting the hang of it, but started at, I think it was like February 19th. <laughs> wow. That hasn't been that long at all. Not at all. I just started because I was bored one day and I, I knew I was reading and someone mentioned it. I don't know. I think I was getting blood work done and someone was talking about a book talker and I was like, oh, that kind of sounds interesting. So I looked into it and I talked to my husband. I said, that's kind of what I want to do. And that's kind of how I accumulated my new bookshelf. <laughs> so what made you interested in indie authors? So I started out reading the first book I ever read, not ever, but that got me back into reading was mm -hmm. a Lisa Jewell book. And I knew that she was originally... I mean, every author's originally indie, but she was a straight indie author up until she got picked up. And I listened to a few of her stories. And once I listened, I was like, maybe I could help support other indies. So that's that's how it started. Wow. And I think that's so amazing because we all need a little support. You know, we all need to have a, a door, a way in. And I think Book Talk is a really good opening you know, for us indie authors. And I really, we really appreciate that. I think one of the things that I first started noticing book talk, you know, like I said, I started looking and I saw these posts and at first it was like on Instagram. So it's more like, I guess it's called something different on Instagram. Bookstagram. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, yeah. <laughs> but um, I saw these pictures, like these beautiful photos. They'd set up these beautiful setups with the books and the flowers and the candles. And I was like, Wow, that is so pretty. And people are <laughs> excited about books. I said, really? And so then I thought, oh, that's a thing. It's really, a, you know. Yeah, I just started that. I, when I first started my bookstagram, I had no clue what I was doing. It is so different from like TikTok and it's so different than YouTube shorts and Facebook. It's its own breed. It is mm -hmm. so different and you have, it has to be pleasing to the eye mm -hmm. or it doesn't gain any traction. So I actually just started really getting into that, which is mm -hmm. why I'm so sunburnt. But <laughs> yes, but I got some good content that day. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Yes. I think like like what you have right now with that bookshelf behind you having that good, you know, book right away, people see that because they have what attention yeah. span is, you know, they're going to look at it for a couple seconds and decide if they're going to watch it or not. And they say, oh, this is about books. Oh, she looks like she's really a nice person. Oh, I want to listen to what she has to say. So, yes, I think that's so yeah, important. Yeah, I made my dad build me this for this reason. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. So I think you mentioned at one time that you went to school and you got out of reading for a little while. Yes. So I hadn't read a book since probably 2015. 
-hmm. and I just started I think I read the first book on December 26th of last year from that whole time span I just I didn't read I didn't have time Mm -hmm. I played three sports in school Mm -hmm. I played travel softball I was going to college to play softball and then I got hurt Mm -hmm. and then when I got hurt I just watched tv because I didn't feel like I couldn't read but I didn't feel like it so I just Mm -hmm. watched tv and then I kept saying all throughout college after I was done with softball I kept saying I really want to get back into reading I really want to get back into reading And my last words right before I walked across the stage I said it to my husband and my family I said once I graduate once I grab that uh, degree I am reading I said that's all I'm gonna do is read (laughs) (laughs) and I have been discovering a lot of really good indie authors I have as well so I was like, now I'm kind of like, oh, I don't want to read. <laughs> like, I don't, do I want to read mainstream? <laughs> that's what I think I just want to read indie authors now. Because, I mean, every once in a while you find one that's not as good as the others. But you, sometimes you just really find like, wow, they're really good. They have a great imagination and a great talent for writing. And that's exciting to me. Which I completely agree. My two top books of this year, actually three or four, are by indie authors. So, and they were all six out of fives. Wow, <laughs> six out of five is a really good one for book talk. <laughs> so what is something that attracts you to a book? Like when you look at it and you're like, ah, oh, this looks like one I want to read. So normally I do go based off the cover. I am a cover mm-hmm. shopper. Um, but I also really enjoy if I can look at the back of the book and there's a mm-hmm. quote or something intriguing on the back, uh-huh. I will, I most likely will buy it. <laughs> oh. So do you generally start out by reaching out to authors or do authors reach out to you? It's a mixture. Um, mm-hmm. I've reached out to a few and I, when I first started, like the arc, the whole like mm-hmm. ARC journey, everything like that, I reached out to everyone. Like, if I thought their book sounded interesting, I would fill out their form. Now it's to the point where I have so many of them Mm -hmm. that if people reach out to me, yes, I will still make time for it. But I don't, I only fill out a form if I've read book book one Mm -hmm. and I know I want book two. So I've I've gotten to the point where I normally get the messages now. (laughs) And so now you're having to schedule it, right? A little bit more? Yes. Yes. I actually purchased a ARC, like, it's a whole book that I can write my reviews. I can put my star ratings. I can color a picture of the book on it. I can do a due date. And it's, I actually purchased it from an indie author. Okay. Wow. (laughs) And so that's a good way to... I know that I have a tor- I'm a terrible at organization. So that was a good way for you to, <laughs> <laughs> to keep yes. track. I'm finding that too more and more as I need to keep track of things. Whereas at yeah. first, you know, I just kind of like jumped in and let's go for it. But now I'm like, oh, wait, I need to. Now I need the, to, yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to plan this. So one thing I, uh, I really also appreciate is your reviews because you do a good job of finding something specific about I think that's one thing is when when book talkers do a review they find something specific that they liked about it it's not you know even if it's there's something they didn't like it completely they still find something like okay well this was a good book for this sort of person right you can at least target or guide it towards the readers that would be interested and then there's a quote or something that you really liked from it or something about a character that you liked Um, I've been actually asking people about how do I do a good review like because I'm I'm learning too how to do reviews Um, and so I think you've been doing a good job of you know saying something that you like about it what type of reader would be interested in that um, a quote like you did before um, and then maybe a little bit about it like a little synopsis right yeah so, so I try not to put any spoilers yeah, in my reviews. It's kind I of feel hard. like, exactly. It's it's hard to, especially if you love the book, it is so hard not to 
you know, just blurt everything out. I remember you said like, I'm not going to tell you about the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what happened, but this happened. I know. You got to try to, I'm not going to tell you who the villain is. <laughs> but I try to keep it to the point where they can, they get a gist of what happened. Mm-hmm. And they, I always find, I don't know what it is, but whenever I see videos that have, um, like the quotes on them, mm-hmm. like even if it has, it's just in one part of the book, I feel like that markets the book so well. Uh, so I always like, even when I look at books in the store, mm-hmm. if it has a quote on the back, I'm buying it. Like if it's something that sounds good. Yeah. So I highly recommend that. <laughs> One thing I see a lot of that they're doing on book talk a lot, and these are authors, is they are doing their own little hardback covers, and they have these full illustrations, and they have the sprayed edges, and I'm like, mm, I'm trying yes. to learn from that, but you know, if when we print that, um, if I was going to have Amazon like do that, any if you put like one dot of color, it automatically increases the price yes. of the book, so. It's one of those. Yeah, I'm on a street team and I'm not going to say the author, but the books are colored. The pages are all colored, like bright colors. And they're beautiful. They are stunning. They're her special editions, but they are pricey. Like, are they worth it? Yes. Uh, Yeah. But I understand there's some readers that can't afford that, Mm -hmm. that really want to read your book but they can't afford that. So if an author does do that, if they created a regular one, plus mm-hmm. the special edition, you will find your your people that want that special edition. Right. And and like you saw in my book, I was, I'm trying to do illustrations that even though they're black and white, they still have yes. like some tone. Like That's some... my favorite thing. I love when pages have something mm-hmm. instead of just words, like, yes, that's the purpose of a book. But I miss the picture book days. <laughs> so like if yeah. I have a little picture, I'm happy. Okay. Well, I'll give you a little spoiler and I don't care if people on my <laughs> podcast hear it. Um, <laughs> for book two, I'm working with my illustrator and we're going to be doing uh, two page illustrations, like full. Ooh. I really like it. I, I'm looking at some of the, you know, like like you and other people and they get these little packages and they're opening it up and like oh look at this there's this little I'm like oh I want to I want to create little author packages that I can send yeah. out to, to to book talkers and to you know bookstagrammers and because it's it does get your attention right it, it gets the reader it gets the viewer's attention of oh look isn't that cute oh I want to read that book or isn't that pretty yes so those little gifts are good and I like that you show them off when you unru- you know do the unboxing I see some people they kind of just tear into the book and they're like here's the book but I like the the I like the way you kind of like very respectfully and gently open it because there's some they they put a lot into wrapping them sometimes. Yes. I'm like I'm like here's do. my Amazon box here you go. <laughs> I always I hate opening them and like having to rip them. I'm like they put so much thought into it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I think that that in itself as an art is creating those that visually appealing package. Yes, I you know, agree. That's, that's a really good, and I'm I'm thinking, like that's the thing I encourage if any authors are watching this, that they think about what kind of little things, it, and it's not always that expensive, like to get little stickers or to get little bookmarks. Yeah. I mean, those are things that you can create and and get printed out pretty easily. Um, Which you can even do that for like your ebook people. Like if you send an ebook to someone, um Ooh. I actually just received I don't know where I put it it's right there I just received like a envelope I didn't expect it because I had already reviewed it everything I talked to this author frequently I didn't know she had my address but I got <laughs> a little a card and I thought it was going to be a graduation card for like my niece you know stuff like that and I opened it and I'm like well this doesn't make any sense and I start opening it and she sent stickers, she sent like character art, just little stuff to tell me like she appreciated me reviewing. Wow. So like even the people that you send a an ebook to, mm-hmm. they can still get, you know, and those aren't I mean, I'm not saying they're not cheap, but 
not expensive. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. They're they're they still cost money. Mm-hmm. But it's still something that that makes me want to read the rest of her her books. Yes. yes. The fact that she knew I did it and appreciated it. Okay. So it's just Yes, showing the appreciation. And then also that gives you something to hold on to, like something physical. Yes. I think that's important. Yeah, that's one thing I miss when I do an ebook, read an ebook is, you know, that physical connection. Yes, I am an out of sight, out of mind person. <laughs> so if it's on my Kindle, I hate saying it because I know some authors can't afford to send physical and I, mm-hmm. I understand and I normally try to help pay for stuff. Mm-hmm. But if it's on my Kindle... I have one and I know I need to read it, but I keep forgetting that I have mm. a Kindle. So if it's not right in front of me, I don't, I don't think about it. And it's the mm-hmm. same thing. If I put something in the fridge, if it's not in a clear container, it doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, how I'm, I still, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still trying to find a, I put a calendar on the wall and even that <laughs> disappears after a while. I don't see it. Anymore. I know. You just start <laughs> forgetting about it. <laughs> Like, I'm not looking in that direction anymore. I realize exactly. it's like part of the scenery now. <laughs> Me too. That's why I rearrange my bookshelf all the time. Because mm-hmm. if I don't, I'm going to be like, did I read that? Is it, does that exist? Is that real? <laughs> Are you sure? So I rearrange this probably once a month. I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I have a question for you because I see a, a variety uh, of covers. And yes, <laughs> there's this debate going on of people versus no people right um do you think it's just a matter of what the genre is or do you think it's a does it matter to you if there's people or no people or what do you think is a general consensus on that so for me personally I do not care if it has people or if it doesn't have people Mm -hmm. I am one of those ones if if it looks interesting I'm going to read it I have I am a very easy person to please so I read every genre, so that part mm. doesn't... Every genre. Wow. I even read some memoirs, but they have to be... Those ones are the specific, but anything else, I'll read it. But I do know a lot of people like the more discreet. Mm. So, like, they want something on the cover, but they don't want people, especially if it's, like, a darker book. Mm. They don't want people on it. But I feel like fantasy you should be able to put people on it. Okay. I feel like certain genres, yes, but a lot of people want discreet now. Mm. They want all their bookshelves to be aesthetically pleasing. Mm. They want just bright colors or they want dark colors. Okay. So I'm one, I don't care if it looks mm. good, it looks good. <laughs> yes. I think young adults, readers especially, they, they tend to like the people more, I think, than the yeah. the more adult readers that's that's just what I've noticed yeah. I just remember when I was a kid going to bookstore I didn't want to look at anything unless it had a person on the front <laughs> like, it, I wanted to it know draws who. you in it makes <laughs> you feel like the people are in the book <laughs> and that's and that's why I chose to have people on my cover but yeah and then I started saying oh look that's other people are doing more like symbols and really beautiful visuals and so I was like hmm and, and then and my book is kind of in between right it's not yeah it's not really young adult because the words there's a lot of complex words and it's a complex plot but it's also not I mean it's not like dark dark yeah so like I think people I think I always think readers like 16 and up would be from yeah I would say about 16 and up any other words of advice to other um book talkers or authors or anything that you could think of that you'd like to add my main thing is if you can support someone, support them. If you, my biggest thing with ARC reading, do I believe that the reviewer needs to be honest? Yes. Mm-hmm. I 100% think you need to be honest. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the whole, if it's, I do understand it, but I don't. If it's below three stars, yes, I think you should wait to post a review. Mm-hmm. But after a certain point, I don't think you should put, I don't think they should attack the review. I think they should be genuine. Just say it wasn't for me. Because there's going to be a reader that likes it. Yeah. Um, 
other than that, I really just think support. Support right. for everyone. Reposting stuff. Liking. Sharing. Yes. Mentioning books to, like I mentioned books to my book club. <laughs> I bring some of my books. And I let people look at them. Look, flip through them. See if they want to read it. So then that supports the author. Yes. Just yes. little stuff. Yeah. And that makes a difference because when someone's, like I said, when someone's holding it in their hands, it's a more of a closer, you know, they're closer to reading it or getting it. Yes. So and I do appreciate and that I can verify that you have done that. And I know this like when someone says, oh, that was like an interesting book, you'll chime in and say, oh, yes, it is a good book. You should read it and things like that. And that does really, really help us authors that are trying to get started. Um, so how can we support you? Um, you can head over to e any of my pages. I have a TikTok, Instagram. I just started my YouTube. I'm not so sure on it yet. And I, I also just started a Facebook group that I'm going to be doing basically the same thing we just did, just explaining how you can progress your, your accounts, how to get uh, ARC reads, how to support authors. So I just started that and I will send that to you as well. But yes, I would love to see that. And I'd like to share that too. I Thank just you. started, I think last night. <laughs> wow, moving and shaking, that's for sure. Well, thank you so much, Kirsten, for everything that you've done for authors and for readers. And I really appreciate you taking this time to meet with me in your busy schedule. I appreciate you having me. All righty. And everyone, make sure you support Kirsten and follow her and make sure you subscribe to Mocha Wave Talks because every girl who reads has her own magic. Mm -hmm.